Okay, the next talk, um, again about um, memory. <laughs> it's a good track. Python memory from Tomek, right? Um, we had a small accident uh, with the water, so, um, but I think everything's cleaned up now, and we can start now. Have fun. Hello, uh, my name is Tomek. Uh, I'm Oinopion on the internet, um, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about Python and its memory, and uh, some disclaimers. Uh, I'll have code examples on my slides, and everything was executed at Ubuntu, that's the 1204, 64 bits uh, on CPython 2.7. This is kind of an older setup. It comes from straight from uh, my company's production. Uh, if, you, if you run this code on, on other systems and on other uh, Python implementations, you will get totally different results. And this talk might, might have been invalid. Um, I'm not expert in CPython. I, I, am, I, I do Python for a long time, but I don't like to dwell into um, its guts. Um, so at some level, this talk is kind of, I don't know what I'm doing talk. <laughs> um, everything that I will touch here is way more complicated than I have time to, uh, to to get into, so this is also a lie, as in it's oversimplified. Um, and yeah, I'm not even sure anything here is true. Um, this talk is, is a case study or a, a report from Battlefield, mostly uh, a, a, a battle to keep my sanity intact. Um, I'm a web developer, I work for a company and we have long-lived web processes. They, you know, this is normal Django setup. So they, we want them to to keep leaving for for a long time. Um, we, for some legacy reasons, we have a couple of requests. Actually, one request uh, or one resource that if you if you hit it with HTTP, it will crunch some numbers and generate report and show it to very important people. Um, but during this, this request, there will be maybe half a gigabyte or a little bit more memory allocated just for this report. It's fine. We, we have capacity planning that includes this. We know from our business this request happens only maybe twice or three times every day, so it's okay. If, if there's one process churning this memory, the other processes should be unharmed. But for some reason, um, this memory, this, this half, a, half a gigabyte memory is never released. This kind of uh, links to the question we had for a, a previous talk. Um, and uh, for some time it was okay for us. We just restarted processes periodically. But then, then we wanted to kind of dig deeper and know what's the reason and uh, to improve our capacity planning, to improve uh, resource utilis utilizations. We wanted to get rid of this problem. So. Request stays. We just want to. This, we just want this memory to be released and uh, for our application to to get back to its kind of a baseline memory usage. Um, after spending many hours uh, fruitlessly trying to to find what it what it is that it uh, that it causes it, I've um, reduced our code to something like this. We have a, um, a function or a, um, a, group, a, a piece of code that allocates roughly 100,000 um, uh, strings to a list, and uh, this, uh, each of these strings is roughly five kilobytes big. Um, after that, we do, we do some report on this, uh, and then we allocate some small um, small amount of memory to keep results, um, gathered results, and you know, pro uh, display it as a summary later on. Uh, the code doesn't need the, the, the big list anymore, so it deletes it. it you know, in, in the real code, it, it, it was more of a, uh, it, the, the big variable had, would uh, just go out of scope, but for, for here, we just delete it. 
and we report uh, some, some more afterwards. The um, report functions here will report memory usage as, uh, as in resident set memory. So here's the output of this, of this program. So this, this reduced program. So after allocating this big list of strings, we have half a gigabyte of memory used. And after using delete, so um, reducing the reference count to this list, the memory stays intact, more or less intact. Um, this is not normal Python behavior. Uh, I like Python because I don't have to deal with memory. I don't have to deal with manually deallocating memory about thinking about this. I just leave it to the interpreter and uh, go on about my business and uh, my employer's business features that I want to implement. Um, at, the, at the first sight, I was think, feeling, well, maybe there is uh, some kind of a hidden cyclic dependency. Maybe I'll just need a, a, to push garbage collector a little bit more to work. So that's what I did. I've uh, introduced garbage collection into, uh, a forced garbage collection into this small program. Didn't help at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Im importing module caused, uh, caused the program to use a, a little bit more memory, so. Yeah, um, at this point, you know, I've, I've, I've started to question my own sanity. Uh, I had a, uh, I needed to rest, uh, I needed to uh, gather my thoughts. And you know, after resting some, I've decided I need a, I need a friend, I need, a, I need someone to help me with, uh, uh, to, de to debug this problem. I, I was thinking, well, where's the memory leak? I've, I have to have memory leak. So probably somewhere this code silently you know, sends some strings into, into, into outer space and never releases, releases it in the memory. Uh, I've tried to find a couple of friends on the internet, mostly in terms of uh, tools I can use to debug memory usage. Um, uh, Piotr, uh, in the talk before, described some of them, and I found those tools utterly unusable to the person that is in despair need of knowing what's happening. Um, if you have time to, to get to know those tools, they are kind of nice. But the documentation is mostly uh, horribly convoluted, and uh, the output of those programs is really complica complicated. Um, the only thing I found that I've, the only tool that I found that worked for me and I could understand it uh, is Guppy, and uh, and its uh, more memory-related um, part called Hippi. Um, you can find it on the, on the SourceForge. Uh, you can also do pip install guppy, and it works. Documentation, well, they claim to have it. Uh, there are some examples. Um, but most importantly, it is kind of self-explanatory. So you don't have to actually, you don't need that much of, the, of documentation. It's still better than others. Uh, although I've received email from um, Victor Stinner, who implemented a, a very nice uh, module for Python 3 called Trace Malloc, Trace Alloc, and uh, I haven't uh, I haven't had time to test this on my code, but uh, it looks like it, it's actually helpful and well docu documented on the Python documentation uh, page. So how does Guppy work. What what does it do? Um, I, and uh, by Guppy, I mean actually the, the only piece that I've used. So Hippi, um, you import Hippi from uh, from the Guppy, and then you insert. Um, then you, then you then you request that you want to take a snapshot of of, of your heap. Um, it's a it's kind of an overloaded list, so you can also uh, slice on it. And then if you print it, it will display a nice uh, overview of what's happening in your program. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've introduced this into my uh, small uh, case study to see what is happening and uh, if I'm sane or not. Uh, and that's the output it gave me. So we can see that um, uh, after the allocation of, of big list, we have Half of, half of gigabyte represented 
uh, in strings. You can see it uh, um, in red bold number, right? It's 504 so, and so on. Uh, and uh, it is, the count is actually what we kind of expect. It's around 100,000, uh, a little bit more, but the rest of it is just um, Python's, C Python's uh, implementation detail. It keeps a lot of strings in memory. And after deallocating the memory, uh, we can see that roughly 100,000 uh, strings go away, and uh, memory used by strings is only uh, 800 kilobytes. Uh, HIPAA reports, reports memory as seen from inside of Python interpreter. So, and if you if you see uh, if you if you look at the total memory. Uh, after deallocating, it, only, it, it claims the Python, uh, the memory used by Python, uh, by objects uh, that Python is aware of, is only one and a half megabytes. So, where did we go? <laughs> well, the, the, the answer uh, is easy for anyone who recently finished a um, university. Uh, course on system op operating systems or memory management, but for me that was uh, almost 10 years ago, so it wasn't that clear for me. So a little re refresher, there's a um, phenomenon uh, called memory fragmentation. Um, what is it? Well, if you think about memory from, from the point of view of Python interpreter, uh, the memory is supplied to, to, your, to to Python as a continuous address space. And it has this property of growing and shrinking only on one side, um, let's say uh, right side. Uh, so if your, if your program allocates some memory, it's there, then you request some more memory, um, like in my example test case, uh, it's, it's being added to the right. And then we release the big chunk of memory, right? Uh, it's released, uh, but it cannot, it, it cannot be reused because that would require the uh, memory space to shrink from the other side. So, you know, this, this gave me a, a, a really good hint where, to prob where the problem can be. And I thought, well, I will go and relentlessly remove all the small allocations and do them before the big uh, list allocation. So, so to say, prepare the memory so that the big allocation can be freely released to the system memory. But this never happened. I mean, I, I did that. I, pre I prepared this. Uh, but still, the memory has not been released to the system and I still hasn't been sure that I'm sane. Um, this, now, this part will, will link a little bit to the previous presentation, and uh, at this point I had to go out to, into wild internets and vast plains of undocumented um, interpreter implementation details. Um, and uh, I had to learn about how Python actually uses system calls to um, grant you memory you wish to use. Um, and basic lessons learned from this is that Python doesn't use uh, the system, the, the malloc, it's not actually system call, it's a, it's a standard library call, but for our purposes here, I will call it sys, uh, standard, uh, I would call it system call. Um, it, Python doesn't use it directly because it's too costly for small objects. There's a, uh, there's penalty for, calling um, a function, calling assist, uh, a function that lives in the kernel space that is um, separate from your program and kernel has to do um, all the tasks required to protect kernel from your malicious program. Of course, we know our programs are not malicious, but the kernel doesn't. So there's a lot of overhead there. And uh, Python implements more, more, more uh, sophisticated allocator on top of malloc system call or standard library call. Um, there are a couple of 
um, of uh, improvements it tries to do. Um, one of them is called free lists, and uh, because Python interpreter runs your code uh, highly, um, highly dynamically, it actually is true that the, you, can, you can look at your code classes and instances, and they are just um, uh, dictionaries and lists that, are, that have some, some special semantic to it, some special way of, of describing it. But from the perspective of um, a program running in memory, it's just lists and dictionaries. And uh, uh, you can imagine that from, if you have been for a previous talk, you, you've seen that there is a, a bit of overhead, memory overhead uh, to dictionaries and lists. So Python tries to keep those objects in uh, close at hand, so it doesn't immediately release your list if it goes away. It kind of tries to um, keep a, um, a handful of, of lists and dictionaries ready to be reused, uh, because it will be reused. To the next uh, function you were gonna call, internally it will be represented as an object called frame, and it will have a, a list of um, uh, of variables that are, are inside, uh, and so on and so on. So for for many um, for handful of, of most common types, there is a um, there is a special cache for where, where where they are kept when after you've released them to Python. Uh, and from what I've uh, been told, it speeds up code execution immensely. Uh, but this also um, gives us ability to play a little bit with this and see how we can abuse it. So to, to check whether it's actually, you know, what I've read on the internet has uh, some kind of relation to uh, the interpreter that I have installed on my system. I've uh, uh, devised a, a, a kind of a free list torture which just allocates um, lists of growing length so the alloc function will allocate a list that's, uh, that has some strings in it and it's uh, of length of i. So the, each list in, 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 uh, um, will, will be a little bit bigger. And after, just immediately after making this, this long list, the, 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 those growing list, we just uh, take every element of this, of this newly created list and we put it in a in another one, so we release this newly created list. Um, as I said before, the, the, the free lists are kept in, uh, uh, in pools that have uh, similar mem memory footprint, so shorter list will, be, will live in, in shorter lists, sm slightly bigger will be nearby, and so on and so on. Uh, so here, after deleting the big, uh, big variable, the big list, um, the memory usage will not drop because of this, uh, of this problem. Um, at this point, I've, uh, I've decided that, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing about uh, my company having a request that allocates half a gigabyte of memory is actually completely ridiculous, and I've decided to offload this work to a, uh, a task queue, uh, so to say, um, to, to the more direct terms, to, to a sub-process. Uh, and kind of that, that freed me from, uh, from the immediate danger of going mad with uh, trying to debug C Python internal memory management. Um, so, if you ever have this kind of problem and you and you try to to think about it, there are a couple of solutions. I a couple of recommendations I, I have for you. First of all, try to make better use of memory. Um, usually, if you have uh, objects that you know will be living longer than other ones, try to. Um, allocate them in a kind of longevity, uh, reverse longevity order, right? So the, the longest, li longest living objects first, and then, uh, and then the rest. Uh, if you have no ability to do that, try to offload uh, 
memory usage to sub-process and then let the system, the operating system, take care of reclaiming memory and, and cleaning up after you. This is the lazy man uh, uh, solution, and I'm lazy, so I used it. As Piotr said before, there are um, other implementations of malloc. One I've tried and found that it actually helped me in my own problem was GE malloc. And you can load it using, uh, you can force Python to use it by uh, using LD preload system uh, environment. No, environment vari variable. Um, and uh, I've tried to use it with, with my uh, example, and you can see that it helps, but it has drawbacks. So the, uh, in the upper uh, output, you can see what we've seen before, just pure, uh, it's, it's just copied here. And after using GE malloc, you can see that first of all, the uh, all time peak memory usage is bigger. Uh, GE malloc, is much more sophisticated than, than malloc, and it uh, it tries to it, it kind of implements its own um, memory allocation algorithm quite uh, in quite sophisticated way. So here we can we can see that it uh, it actually has um, bigger overhead, but then it's actually easier for uh, for Python to release this memory to the system. So uh, this would work for my case as well. On the other hand, I didn't want to replace uh, this for uh, for everything because I, w I, f I was thinking that this is kind of um, this would require me to test every piece of my, of my of my program to see whether you know I haven't br broken any other part of it. And uh, you can actually see that after this, GC has uh, has released some some more memory, so this is even better. Um, GE malloc is used by some big names in, in our industry. I think uh, Facebook is using it for at least part of their systems, uh, and they are heavily involved in, in development of GE malloc. Um, yeah, so my time runs out, so a couple of com conclusions. And um, uh, first conclusion is that sometimes memory leak is not what, it, what you think it is. And sometimes you have to go back uh, to the school to remember where your mem memory might be hiding. And the other thing is that malloc from glibc is not the best of breed. Funny story is that I've uh, tried to share this problem with, uh, with a friend of mine, uh, and I brought program with me from work to, to home, and at home I have Mac, as you can see. Uh, and the problem was totally solved. I mean, it was non-existent, and uh, the, the reason being um, Mac um, kernels on Mac uh, use uh, G, some kind of uh, one version of GE malloc. So this is a nice feature for to have on your uh, on your system. Um, as I, as I mentioned, memory-intensive work 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 best in subprocesses. And uh, as a kind of offbeat uh, mention here, uh, if you're using any kind of C extension, they, they are not using Python, um, they might not be using Python uh, memory allocator, which means that they might uh, kind of uh, break Python uh, ability to release system uh, memory to the system because um, uh, they will allocate it using malloc. It's kind of complicated, but we've, we've seen this actually do harm. Okay, that's it. Um, any questions? So, any questions, please uh, go to the microphone. Hi. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just wanted to, to comment on the use uh, replacing malloc with something else. It's, a, it's a good for a stopgap solution for now. But uh, please rem remember that malloc is going to improve over time. The, the Linux guys are going to uh, make it better and better over time. And the 
all the other tools are not going to take advantage of that in 10 years from now or something like that. So if you use the de default malloc, your program will improve even without you touching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. Um, uh, it's, it's not only malloc, actually, uh, Python management in, uh, uh, memory management in Python 3 is actually improving a lot. Uh, as I've said, um, uh, Victor Stinner has written a very good um, piece, uh, module called trace malloc to, that, that allows you to de debug memory, which is really, really nice. Um, um, I was just wondering, so in your case, um, you're, at, you're having a case where you uh, would like allocate a bunch of memory uh, for a request and then that was happening over and over again and then you were like building up, like you had like what looked like a memory leak, right? Like it was a lot of memory um, over time? I, I, haven't, I haven't done a good job describing the problem. The problem was we, have, um, we had a couple of web workers, web, web worker processes and our capacity plan said they are allowed to, to be at baseline memory of let's say 50 megabytes of RAM. Uh, but we haven't planned for them to be half of a gigabyte all the time. It's, oh, okay. It was okay for them to, to go and, and eat memory once in a while, provided that there weren't too many of them concurrently. And uh, with this pro problem, we, we've seen that you know, they've, they've started eating memory and then keeping it, keep it in there at, at the high peak and not releasing it. And that caused, uh, if, that caused our, our capacity planning to fail. And, uh, that wasn't pleasant. Was it increasing over time, though, or was it like constantly? No, it, oh, okay. it, would, it would just peak at half a gigabyte and then stay there. And uh, no other request would, would even touch it. Uh, and so we could, we could see that this memory is being um, reused internally in Python, but not returned to the system. And that wasn't good for us. Okay. One last question, please. Uh, you said there's memory uh, fragmentation inside the Python uh, memory area. So would there maybe be a way to defragment, uh, defragment that area, um, like that Python reallocates the memory areas? I, I didn't get the question. Is, are you if, asking if, you have, if, if it's if possible for Python to uh, defragment memory by moving objects around? Yes. Uh, no, that's, ha. for C Python it's not possible. Once, I'll, once, uh, once there the objects stay, and you can actually see that by running ID on uh, on an object, it will just give you a, a rough, um, a row uh, pointer value, if, if I'm correct. But I might, I might not be correct. But they're not, they're not moving around. And uh, uh, if you want that, I think uh, Java has this feature. So you could, you could try running your, uh, your program with Jiten, and that would help. Also, uh, PyPy has a lot better uh, garbage collector, and uh, although it, it's, uh, as far as I n checked last time, it hasn't had this ability to move objects around, but it was much more sane than what we have in, in CPython. Okay, thank you, Tomek. Thank you very much.